science journalism class has always produced a magazine called SciView every semester. So I went into this class knowing that the, what I wrote had the potential to be published, to be distributed, to have people read it. I think that's one that Claire made. Yeah, I was going to say that doesn't look old. I hoped that I could learn some more about how to properly tackle this issue of science and writing. I kind of like this, not as the cover photo. But, but just something to illustrate it on the yeah, side. Yeah, and this is cool too. Elizabeth Eaton is a University of Arizona senior. Her science journalism professor is Susan Swanberg. I yeah, I like that too. She definitely encouraged me to think about different topics that I didn't think that I had the scientific knowledge to look at. Eaton's topic would be found in the lab of Claire Barker. I decided to go across the street because I didn't think anyone else was going across the street to the other building. And I wandered into her lab and she was so excited that someone was willing to listen to what she had to say about pottery. Talk about your identity through the dishes. You'd probably think about, you know, your mom's fancy china. When you go to a museum, you see the pretty pottery, the decorative pottery, and you think, wow, that's such artistic talent. You don't ever look at a brown pot and be like, oh, that's cool. How did this, how did this catch your eye? Well, it's very interesting to kind of look at things that nobody else is looking at and think about things that other people aren't necessarily thinking about. I think it makes, you know, archaeology stronger as a discipline when you have this kind of diversity in the literature. It's just, it's important. You have where you came from. And it was Barker's enthusiasm for ancient, utilitarian are, cookware that drew Eaton to the anthropologist as the subject for her Sciview story. Barker is studying the everyday cookware found at the Hamalavi settlements in northern Arizona near Winslow. She's trying to decipher the origins of the people who lived there in the 14th century. If you have a whole group of people doing something in a similar way, you can see that community of people just by the byproducts of their behavior, right? And so all of this pottery is the byproduct of a community. She showed me that it really is a fascinating subject to look at corrugated cookware, utility wear pottery. It helped me realize how important the corrugated pottery is. It's not just pots that they cooked food in. It was something that had been carried with them for generations. By looking at these kind of manufacturing groups, you can see, you know, was there a diversity of communities? Was there only one group? Did everybody who made pottery here make it in the same way? Were they all part of the same community? Or were there different communities? This really allows us to kind of say, yes, there was definitely social diversity in this area. Seeing that she made this big, to me, a big discovery through pots. That's cool. Who's heard of that before? So I thought that it was something different that not really anyone had ever read about before. I loved writing the piece kind of duly to have her story as well as the pots shine. And so I, I wrote about how she was kind of our own modern day Indiana Jones, but instead of a whip and a hat, she had some pots. I'm very grateful that I found Claire and have had the opportunity to tell her story. To me, journalism is a lot about discovery, about finding things that people don't know about, places they never heard about, places maybe they'll never get the opportunity to travel to, things that otherwise would be unknown.